yeah, our plan failed. Let's make another plan. I was like, no, <laughs> plan A is going to work. Dies and tries it again. No. Oh. That was right. one. The cave was one when I went in there prematurely. And even though I wasn't supposed to. And, um, I swear I was on there. I think, um, it must have, no. I think I managed to scrape through against the yellow ram just with, like, three of my guys, like, waddling around. Hmm. Right. Well, we've now officially started. Sweet. So, um, well, thanks for coming, guys. Hi. So, it will be the like the first of the games clubs that I'm hoping to have. Uh, obviously, 15 was probably the biggest thing to talk about this week. Um, and then Type Zero will be next week, and starting from there. But if there's other games you want to vote on, and we can talk about them, even if it's older stuff like Final Fantasy IV and six. <laughs> Whichever. Um, just just put them in the suggestions. We can always like have a month where we play those games and we just yeah just talk about them and yeah stuff like that. So um, yeah. as we were talking prior, kind of shoot the uh, stuff with that. So Katie, you were saying about the deaths. Mm. How many? How much people died? So. <laughs> Yeah, how, how how did people find the demo in terms of difficulty? I think... Well, oh, when you go first. Okay. I thought it was... um I thought to start off with it was really difficult. Because I remember I did something similar to, I think, what Katie was saying. I went and just fought against the massive ball thing. Mm. And that was a big mistake. It took, like, 20 minutes, I think 15 minutes to actually kill it the first time without dying and I kept like running around it, running away, running back and so on. Yeah. So it was really difficult at first, but then as soon as you leveled up a bit, because you leveled up really fast, I thought in the demo. Mm. And as soon as you were around le along around like level 10, I thought the difficulty was absolutely fine. Yeah. Oh, we might have another one. Don't we? Um, yeah, so, Brett, what did you think in terms of that? Well, because I forgot that you had to go to the camp to level up, and the fact that for some reason every battle I got into, I had to fight 20 or 30 monsters, I was dying quite a lot. I kept seeming to get swarm by them, especially in the cave with the goblins. Yeah. The goblins uh, seem to have a happy habit of getting more and more of them keep flooding out the cave. And I found the, that that's how I died the first time I died. I was like, oh. Hello, where'd you yeah. come from, guys? Yeah. Yeah, and the saber tusk you at one point, especially more in the nighttime cycle, I noticed there seemed to be bigger groups of them that tried to hunt me if I decided to try and take on two or three of them. Mm. The group just seemed to get bigger. Yeah, I think I found the same similar thing as AJ did, where, um, like, it, it starts hard, but I think there's, like, some sort of aspect in it where you do have to have, like, a little bit of grinding in there. Yeah. Because I found I found that a lot easier once I'd grinded a little bit on some of the monsters, like avoiding the ones like the rams and like the big groups. So I found there's like a couple, like a few spots on the map with like rams everywhere, and there's one which had like a massive clump of them. That was a really bad idea to take those on to begin with. I was like, oh, I didn't realize they all kind of aggroed on me, and they kind of all came after this massive like group of rams chasing after me. <laughs> but um, I don't think the difficulty was that bad. I think it was like learning and then realizing what you had to do in it before you started rushing in and kind of getting killed. Um, yeah, behemoth I found was a bit, you know the behemoth's really difficult. I didn't realize you had to get like you know someone to kind of kill it to begin with. Yeah. Um, I think with um with me it was obviously with having these kind of newish tactics. So with the mm. the parrying and the blocking, and obviously mm. I'm so used to just button spamming half the time. Mm. And then having to actually think, um, should I parry now? Should I block? And you know, yeah. trying to dodge things, <laughs> I found that quite difficult to do to begin with. Mm -hmm. But playing more, it gets a bit easier. Yeah. I think. That's one thing like that really confused me. I think it confused quite a lot of people. The parrying in the tutorial, it took me forever to realise how to parry. I thought you had to like hold targets on them and then push X square just as they're starting to attack you. It mm -hmm. totally wasn't the case. You had to wait for the like mark to appear. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I thought it was a timing issue as well. Mm. I thought it was like, you know, in Assassin's Creed, we have to like push X or square or whatever at the right time to like block it and parry it. It wasn't, it was, it was obviously completely different. I'm not sure it really works well in practice, to be honest, the parrying at the moment, because it 
often depends on how you're angled towards the enemy, and sometimes it just won't work, even if you're doing it properly. That's very true. I had about yeah. two instances in probably about two or three hours where I could effectively use parry and where it lined up with any yeah. form of convenience at all. Mm. I did quite enjoy the parry system in a mm. sense, though, because um, obviously at some parts, and if you guys found it, if you parry with another teammate next to you, you do like a double parry. So like someone attacks it, you parry it, someone attacks it, and then you give it like the finishing blow, so to speak, and kind of makes it weaker. So you get get like a few extra hits in afterwards, Cause like especially that again those rams. It kind of I did it with those, and like it, my teammate, I think it was Ignis most of the time, kind of knocked it over, and then kind of leaves it open and exposed, like the stun state. So mm. you can kind of do that massive like rush move on it. It just kind of I, I quite liked it in that sense, but I think obviously as people say, it needs kind of a bit of tweaking. Yeah, there was a bit of a. Uh, it was a bit strange, like especially mm. with the saber tusks. I'm pretty sure like it slows down time when you parry them, whereas the behemoth and even the um, I don't know what they're called, those elephant, like, big ram things. They don't slow down time, so the parry is very quick with them. Mm. And you've got to, like, double tap square to parry and count it, whereas, like, the saber tusks and the goblins, they've got, like, four or five seconds. Yeah, I found that. Like, that, that I found really, like, I keep getting killed because of it. Like, okay, I've got, like, half a second to react, and it's like, oh, no, that's just not happening. Mm. Those goblins, when you're going through the crawl space, oh, wow, I was not expecting that. <laughs> oh, that's <was> scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the difficulty spike was a little bit crazy. Mm. Even with like the behemoth, like if you like trying to do it when once you've leveled up without the summon, it's still quite a tough thing. Mm. Like, I like I think where the difficulty kind of came for me, like I think the difficulty of the game isn't the case. It's just like parts which just kind of doesn't seem to mesh as well, so to speak. So, like mm. like say like the goblin cave part. You go in, you're doing absolutely fine, then out of nowhere you kind of get swarmed. And because like you can't target the right ones, your teammates are somewhere, you can't even see them to like help them out. You can't target on the enemies to kind of get them off to help your teammates out. I found that was the part that was making it kind of difficult for me. Yeah. And then you have to kind of yeah. run and try and find your teammate to heal them if someone else isn't doing it. I and, um... didn't find too much problem in the cave myself. No. Um, going through it, I mean, yeah, when there were a lot of enemies around, uh, somehow I managed to keep my characters with me. But there was one point where they forked into a circular bit and go mm. right into a high cliff and you can work your way down and I ended up down there on my own and I was like oh there's quite a big horde here now and uh, luckily I kind of like backtracked a bit and everyone turned up and saved me but yeah you're right I mean I think the difficulty is kind of navigating for me around with the camera when you've got a saber tooth charging around and you're trying yeah. to line up for an attack yeah. it's there's a lot of missing and a lot of flailing one thing I think I really like, but it needs a lot of work. Is the warp system? I could not warp really well for the life of me. I like you could, there's not an, there's not many warp spaces. If you know if you found one, mm. you're very lucky. But yeah. then when the warp spaces seem to appear, they seem to be like purposely placed there for the story. But I, I quite like it if you could have like warp spaces just for like just mm. you know make it kind of blend it with the game rather than just making it yeah. seem like a story focused thing. Because you know with the behemoth fight, like, the first time we just warp there. Mm. Tora would have to warp, but then everywhere else didn't really find you warped anywhere other than to like catch up with an enemy. That's Are you looking for something can... like Dishonored maybe, where you uh, warping is integral? Yeah, because like you see a lot of it in the demos, and it seems like quite a big thing. But at the moment, not demo the um, trailers, but you, it's like not much of it. Yeah, it seemed like in, in the trailers, it seemed like you could go up high and kind of. Even in the tutorial, actually, like it, it put you up mm. high, and yeah. uh, you, you could warp down on stuff. But there was mm. there was only but, two mm. instances that I could use that. Yeah, like I found like when you're wandering around, you see like these massively tall things. You think you can just warp on for the heck of it, and you couldn't. And I was like, oh, like, my warp doesn't actually work here. You know, like those again, those towers. I thought, well, I warped on one of those before. I must be able to do it here, even if there's nothing around me, just to. Because I said the tutorial, you can walk up there to kind of get some HP back and some MP back, but I couldn't even do that. I was like, oh, I can't get up there. I'm high a tree, but yeah. I can't get up there. It might be where the demo is situated, because there was quite a lot of open ground, and you can only yeah. really use it for Behe, to be honest, to kind of, mm. like, bait him and then rush back to yeah. Pronto. That's what I'm just saying. I'm just hoping the actual game they mm. can incorporate that a lot more, rather than just being story Oh, yeah. Obviously, that one main part where you use it is the part with the story where you have to... Um, you know, lure behemoth back. It's the only part I found that you probably had to use it. We well, had to use it, really. Cool. Um, so, right, you had. What were you saying to me about um, the 
weapon system. Yeah. So, with, with that, what what did everyone think with the whole uh, having to hold or tap to change weapons? Would would you have preferred it if holding it kind of did the transition between weapons, and then the tapping went as one weapon, or do you think it works well as it is? Again, did it make you think? Did it make you change your strategy? Yeah, my, mine did. I, I changed it straight away. Like, I, I hated the kind of the swords opening. I was like, I need to close the gap. And I, I think, I don't know about you guys, but I had to really like change it um, for my playstyle. Mm. But mm. what did you guys? Did you guys change, fiddle around with it or? Uh, I had a little fiddle around with it. I quite like the hold to attack. Hmm. Uh, found like uh, when I'm kind of trying to charge around after some of the um, saber tooth saber tasks um, if you hold and kind of charge around you tend to kind of home towards them anyway and it was quite nice because even if they're skittering on by you can still kind of put a glancing hit on them and then focus changing around was was, was actually quite nice just hit left or right and then try and go for your attack I, I, yeah. I really enjoyed it mm, I quite liked it I didn't see much of a problem with it but um yeah I I, I quite liked how I gave you the choice whether to hold it or to button mash. I personally like mm. mashed square. I, I yeah, was mashing square. I wasn't I, holding it, I was mashing. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what's holding? How do you hold things? I know, I was like, I've never held <laughs> I, to attack in my life. It's no. button mash all the way. <laughs> I, I was expecting, like, when they had it, I was expecting it to be different. But I was like, okay, like, I hope it is different in the full game. Cause, like, it, it would give that um, customization within the combat. But mm. I don't know, it was okay, I think. I thought it was I guess really it's good, just actually. me then. Yeah. Mm. I didn't really understand it for the first hour, I'll be completely honest. I was just playing it with the <laughs> with the weapons you already had, and then in an hour in I went into the menu and was like, Oh, what's this? And that's when I realised that you had to change them and you know, it depended on what if you were doing an aerial move you could actually use any of the weapons and yeah, then it was really fun to actually mix and match and to see what suited which enemy the best and yeah, I think it can actually have the potential yeah. be really deep. Yeah, I, to be honest, I didn't really look much into the uh, changing weapons around. I didn't really like said, understand it particularly, so I kind of stuck with what they gave me. So I kind of just like switched between. I didn't really change much up to do with it because um, mm. I, I didn't feel like kind of gave me much. Cool. It was really quick the way they kind of explained it. I found out. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't That's really. One bit really needed it. a bit more in depth, I think, with the, the whole weapons thing. Because I mean, I was just distracted. If, like say, I button bash, and I was just distracted again. Oh, what's he got now? Oh, it's changed again. And it, it, oh, what's he got now? And it was, I was like, ooh, pretty colours everywhere. Not paying yeah. attention to what's on the screen. But yeah, that's one bit I think, especially to new people of the franchise, because I think this will bring in more because it's different. And I think that does need a bit more, you know, a better description. You're right. In the tutorial, it didn't really mention much about it. But I think through practice and just kind of levelling it a bit, I, I found myself switching around quite a bit. Like, uh, if I'm a lower level, I'm fighting something a little bit tougher. I will switch to drain blades, and then, yeah. yeah, I'll go ahead and yeah. fight with that just to kind of keep me on my toes. And um, the dragoon jump was really, really fun, but that was cool. <laughs> I, I, I found it missing quite a lot, really. Um, yeah, I, found I think the the imperials it was it was worth it, but for the rest of them, not so much. Oh, it worked well on the imp in the cave. <laughs> oh yeah, an hour ago, it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> what I loved was the, I can't remember what it's called, something rush when you kind of like capsize a monster and it's like on its side or like stunned or whatever, it's a prompto's gone. I was like, yes, yeah, this is the time to use my like epic charge up stab <laughs> move. I was like, here we go, boom, oh, instant yeah, kill. Was cool. I was like, yeah. That was fun. Uh, I'm trying to add another the call. Yeah. Uh, Stephen said he'll join us, so we'll see. Oh, we oh brilliant. Uh, Stephen. That's really cool. Um, while I do that, is there anything anyone else wanted to bring up? Hello. 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 There we go. That was quick. Hi. Uh, I'm Hi. just watching through through your Twitch at the moment. I can see that you're just currently going through the tutorial, and yeah, you were having the same kind of problems. I think we all were with the whole parry system. <laughs> I think yeah. everyone had that parry issue. <laughs> and obviously, the, the annoying thing is, I think what I find really annoying. Well, what I found really annoying about it was. I didn't understand how to parry, but there was nothing I could do about it. I just had to kind of trial and error. It took me ages to figure out how I was it. Like, sometimes you can push star and it tells you what to do again, or like, like repeat what you're supposed to be doing. To like, there's that refresher, but they had nothing. It took me ages to figure out what I had to do. But they had like no refresher, or like, you know, like if you're doing it wrong constantly, like 
characters sometimes prompt up say, oh, do you know what you're doing? Blah, 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 blah. So do this. And it's like, oh, thanks. That would have been really nice if they'd done that, but they didn't. I was like, oh, it took me quite a while to get the hang of it. I think that's why everyone struggled so much and took a while on that part, because they just didn't like reiterate what they'd said. In yep. case you didn't understand. Yeah. But, um, uh, it's a try. I'm drop out for a sec. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, uh, Stephen, yeah, we've just been talking about the whole combat and weapons and stuff like that. Um, what? How did you feel? Because you've only just recently done the demo, right? Uh, how yeah, did you... I'm kind of playing it now. <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling with the whole uh, weapon system and I'm, how, how it works? I'm loving the weapon system. Um, yeah, the funny story about parry is I still haven't got used to that. Amy actually got it first time. She just was like, oh, let me have a try. She, she did it first time. I was like, how did you do that? She's like, oh, you press L1 on X. And I was like, that's, no, doesn't work for me. <laughs> um, but the one thing, the way it's handling at the moment, it's brilliant. Just needs, it's still, my, the only thing that annoys me really is when Noxus seems to lose his MP and he just like st standing there and you're like, oh, really? Mm. Hmm. It's just it kind of forces you to kind of um, manage it well, yeah. otherwise you kind of get like the, you know, slap on the wrist, you shouldn't have done that, this is how you're going to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just got, I've literally just got to the cave and I'm just like, okay, this is way, and the amount of enemies, and it's like, ah, it's been, that seems to have been a long time since I've fought this many. Hmm. Hmm. It feels like, like it reminds me of like, Kingdom Hearts 2, and it's like Battle of Thousand Hearts. It's like, whoa, there's a lot of enemies. It does have that, like, big, large scale, like when you used to play, like, Final Fantasy 2, and you'd have, like, six goblins coming, like, around the battle. Like, okay, now things are getting a bit hairy now. Um, it's, it's got that feeling to it, I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think. Like, there, there's never, like, one or two enemies. It's, like, a lot. <laughs> yeah, Which I, I think is quite good. I think it's good to have lots of enemies, but obviously with the camera being as, you know, not that great as it, as it is right now, you know, it's kind of difficult though. Hmm. Yeah, it is very strange, like, mm. with, I think it's a bit like Type-0, like, you've got to, like, lock onto everything, mm. and, like, exactly. warp out, and you've got to, like, go out of the battle and then, cut, like, turn the camera and lock onto something, you're like, okay, that's what I'm going to attack now, but mm -hmm. it's, like, it is really, it's really awkward. Um, I think it needs to allow switching enemies to be a bit easier because you can switch, but you can never get the like. I found I can never get the one that I wanted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, I want that one yeah. near prompt two, the one that's attacking prompt two, please. The one, not the one that's kind of like waddling next to him. See, he looks like he's got nothing. Well, like, I want to kill that one that's killing prompt two, but I couldn't. I was like, oh, I can't target on the right one. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna kill this one and just hope prompt two. If prompt two dies, just gonna pat them back. Pretty much just gave up trying to save them. It's annoying me. But, um, Overall, I really liked it. I thought I, I quite like the battle system. I could see like it was, it has potential. I, just, I really enjoyed the battles in it. It just needs to have like the camera tweaked and the targeting for me personally. So that's the major bits that need to be tweaked. And then after that, the parrying system. But, yeah. Like I, other than that, I really enjoyed the weapon system. I can't wait to see what they're going to be doing with like magic. If you've got any magic in there. Yeah. That's true. Actually, yeah. What 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 the like? I'm wondering what the magic will be like. Cause there's mm. actually nothing in there. It's just like there's no magic ho ho hold square when you get down to zero. Summon. Yeah. That, that's kind of like. Oh. <laughs> like the the summon. Yeah. For the so is ev everybody that has done the demo. What did you think of the summon? Oh, oh my god. Oh, that is what a summon is supposed to be. <laughs> Finally. That is that yeah. is a summon. That is that is. It that, felt oh, I think yeah, everyone absolutely thing, adored that. And it was like mind blowing. It was just. Mm. So good. Mm. Yeah, I just fought Behemoth and I was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, just kill me. Go on, just kill me. What, I'll just summon Ramen. What <laughs> I'm really, really loving about this game is the fact that things seem so in scale and huge. Like, Ramu is the Thunder God. You know, he's supposed to be big, he's got to be powerful, and this time he does look like you don't want to mess with him. I was like, this, this, is, this is brilliant, this is perfect. And I've had all the summons seem like really overwhelming in this game rather than just kind of, kind of small. Yeah. Uh, like I think Power Realm Reborn kind of has that, but it's like this has a different scale. Like primals and uh, these idolons are kind of like insane mm. scale. <laughs> like, I, I, I was, could, yeah. 
I just wasn't expecting the size. Um, no, I think it. I think the demo really pointed out what they've been saying all this time about fifteen. How like they're trying to make it big. They're trying to make it like one of the biggest Final Fantasies in terms of scale. Because mm. everything in there is huge. Everything like those monsters that were like wandering around near the water. They were huge. Couldn't go near them, but yeah. before we start fighting one that big. Just imagine trying to fight. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen. Me like trying to fight Titan and things like that. Just fighting. <laughs> That's gonna be interesting. Could you, yeah, use, could you use the summon in the cave? Hmm? Oh, sorry. Could you use the summon in the cave? Did anyone try that? I didn't try that, actually. <laughs> what happens? <laughs> he, he strikes a bolt of lightning on the cave. You're like, wait, <laughs> right. okay. what? Okay. He could do it. <laughs> he, he can do it as a wait, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be honest, has, they, has anyone tried to get, get, get to Titan yet? I tried, and I, I I tried it once, and I was saying, like, I... A part of me was like, I shouldn't be seeing this, because they don't want people to see it yet. <laughs> and when I failed once, I just turned the game off. I was like, no, I'm going to I'm gonna wait until it's properly Till shown time. off. Till this is time. But yeah. uh, I've heard it, it does look pretty big. Yeah, I've seen it. Like, should have they should have glimpsed the trailer, didn't they? Didn't they once, like, knocked something into his big foot? And I was like, oh yeah. my gosh. It's like, if you summon him, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna, like, flip I can't wait to... I don't know if you guys have seen, I saw a video, like, I think it was the day when I was on the massive hype after playing this demo, where someone was, like, discussing what they thought was gonna happen between, like, all the nations, and how they feel like each nation kind of has, like, a summon relating to it. Mm. But obviously this time it's, like, mm. a bit like, oh, where did Remu come from? But I know, like, obviously in the demo, again, they kind of showed Leviathan, like, one of these nations. I don't think it didn't really look like, you know... I don't know what nation it was, but they like talking about how like how many symbols they could see everywhere, and it looked look like it might be kind of like that thing, but mm. no, we'll see. Oh, so that's that seemed pretty cool. I was like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, I can't remember what like their summon would have been. I think he said something like it. I can't. I can't it might have been. Yeah, I'm wondering what uh, what different summons will be in it. Like I said, they, it's kind of known. There's obviously Titan, there's Leviathan, and Shiva. I think it, they show fire like Ifrit. I don't know if it, yeah, was, if it was that. It's been confirmed, I think. Yeah, I think oh, all the good. staples are going to be in it. Yeah, so it's like, is there going to be an Odin, do you think? What's going to... Because it's already Odin. Odin's got to be in it. So, if, if they add Odin, what... Because it pretty much kills anything with using the moon. It's like, if you use Odin, what's it going to do? Mm. Is it going to do more than the kill them? Like... <laughs> well, did, did everyone find the Phantom Swords? Yeah, I found a few of them. They're really awesome. The I... what? Phantom Swords. I've only found one. Which is, is that the Amiga? Oh, thing? was that the thing where you can push like L1 and R1 to do yeah. the magical thing? Yeah, they all come, come around you like in that yeah. first trailer. Oh, oh yeah, only... I found one. There's three of them. Oh, there's wow. three? There's... Yeah. Yeah, there's one on the northeastern side of the map, right oh, where. There's one in the cave where you get Ramu, and there's one once you defeat, you defeat the um, uh, behemoth. Oh, you beat all three and you have to do like an army attack type, type technique. Hmm. Oh, that's uh, yeah, now everyone's gonna be like, get back to the demo. Yeah, go back to the demo again. <laughs> That's gonna be uh, that. Yeah, it'll probably happen in back. So I want to test that because the Amiga thing was really good. But so, so what other kind of abilities are there? Are they kind of the same or? It basically just enables you to heal a bit quicker and just now you to do like a new finishing move. All right. I think one of them lets you recover from being hit and regain your health points. Oh, that's, as, that's as you really do that, so you press L1 just as you fall to the ground, but then you get straight back up rather than staying down, and you recover your health. Oh, that yeah, cool. yeah, that'd be really cool for like, because I'm trying to do the Pima's fight without die uh, without summoning. Oh, okay, and yeah, that would like, be ideal then. It's really, like, it's fine during the day, but like, I don't know if you guys find it like difficulty spike of the enemies when they uh, go into like nighttime, that they suddenly yep. get really strong. Mm. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> And the behemoth, it's like that that spike is just on another level. Like I was fine during the day, and all of a sudden it, it just goes to night and it just clears like three characters. Like, wow, okay, it's just yeah. insane. So, yeah, that, 
that having these different abilities to do these bigger bosses could be could be quite good for like the challenges that people might set themselves. Mm. One thing I'm really interested to see is how the hell how the heck we're gonna do the summons in a in a city environment. You like Okay, Ram is standing up you're like, okay. It could just be what? like an episode of Attack on Titan. <laughs> With the summons. <laughs> Summoning Titan in the middle of the fight in Somnia, whatever it could be. Very much like that. Um, um, you, you guys discussed the cast yet? Like, what do you think of each character? Or? Oh, no, actually, we haven't even got to the, the cat yet, no. Yep. But yeah, do you want to. I'll, I'll let you take the lead on that front, Stephen. You... I'm just like. Okay, from tell why when I first heard the trailer, I was like, that's he's annoying. Now I'm like, oh my god, that's just fucking lovely. And he's hilarious. You're like, mm. when he's when he's going through that little cavern, and he's like, I'm I, I, I'm kind of like choking to death. I'm like, stop being a drama queen. And, <laughs> try, and the other thing now is like trying to identify who's the voice for each character. And you're like, Amy's pointing out the one from tell sounds a lot like in Peter's in Peter's is English voice actor. Hmm. And I've not, not just for me, he's, he's, I think I've got him dead on. I don't know why he just seems alright. I've got no problems with him. It's, I think the only person I've got is he, the only problem is about his English. And it's like that English, that weird strong English accent. I'm like, that's insulting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of Ignis. Um, like, I, I just the it's like too English. Yes. It's like, but, yeah. I, yeah, I you have that. that problem, like, with, you know, imagine the Americans, they can't understand Cheryl but, Cole, so yeah, if you start they... talking in a Geordie accent, we'd and get then... it, but they wouldn't. Oh. So, yeah, I but... think they have to do it, it's just, especially because of his role with Noctis. Yeah, I think, that's I think why. it kind of works for what he is, it kind of, yeah. like, across, like, the different countries and the different, like, cultures, it probably absolutely works dead on for what, like, people are expecting all these hmm. stereotypes, yeah. like, we wouldn't turn around and like if they didn't like overly Americanize or something. Um there are more people with American y kind of accents in here. Like I'm sure the Texans are probably like, What the fuck, we don't speak like that, you know, when we're over like and all these uh fixing cars, you know, looking like that and then we don't have idea. Probably thinking exactly the same thing. Uh, okay. yeah. I I quite quite like Dickens. He was pretty cool. In my opinion. I like Dickens. I just yeah. think the fringe is a bit too tall. It's bothering me. <laughs> 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 it's all about the hair in this demo, sorry. Put that in, player, in the player feedback, it's too much fringe. <laughs> I love his fringe, he's a beautiful man. <laughs> I take it you guys have already talked about Cindy, Cindy's accent, yeah? Oh. No. No. Uh, I, I'm not sure what to think about Cindy. Yeah, I, I don't know. Either. I think it's a bit embarrassing, honestly. I, like... I wasn't expecting her to have that much bazooka. Oh, like, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, like, yeah. And what kind of mechanic has shorts that short? <laughs> I know, like, Final Fantasy creators probably just need to do it in kind of... Cause there was always one in Final Fantasy that's like that, but I just... I don't know, it's just the, the first impression of... I know, like... There's a bit of confusion now whether she's Sydney or the trait of the demo, she was Cindy, so it wasn't actually in like hinting that she was Sid's daughter or something. Mm. Or like Sid's worker. But um Is she fan service or is she there to kind of um be a juxtaposition to the heavy male content, do you reckon, to put a female character in like that? It's to an extent it's probably a bit of both. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 Like they've I not shown it. Any... Make someone like that for like the male I mean, Final Fantasy's always had mixed parties, and, you know, with having kind of a predominantly male party, you've got to put some kind of female attention in there somewhere, I reckon. Yeah. Well, Seems a got... bit sleazy, but... Mm. They've, they've not shown and any... And Grant wasn't the only one who thought that. I was sitting back thinking, oh, if I even say it, people would be like, oh, you're such a feminist, show that, Katie. Just, just, oh, you're such a, you know... Oh, no, no, no. To be fair, I mean, I can quite agree with that. The first time, I, when I approached the garage for the first time, and she was bent over the bonnet of the car... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's just not about her being bent over. It's just how the cutscenes play out, whether the camera's zooming into you know different body parts, and then um, you know all the guys are making expressions. It's just all everything. 
about her so that and how it's presented. Yeah, I, they could have like toned it down. Like I can understand that, like they wanted to be like that. They could have like I, I personally would have liked it if they toned it down a bit. Like especially <laughs> if it turns out she is our female sort of the game. I think they could have done a lot better with Ooh. making her less of a sex object and more of like something more meaningful in there. Yeah. Like this yeah. is the this is this is this is a, this is a milestone, guys. We've got a female sitting here after how many Final Fantasy games? This is our first female sitting. And this is what she is. She's bent over a car in short. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if we go back to seven, we can think about Cra Cloud trying to get into Don Corleone's mansion and yeah. the whole bar oh. house scene. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, that was like uncomfortable on another level. But that's, not, <laughs> that, that's more tongue in cheek, though, isn't it? That's yeah, like, like Cloud this... has to dress up to get in, and then with this, you've kind of got a blatant sexuality within cars. Yeah. I think if they had, like. Noctis doing that though, I think it would be received different. I think just at the time mm. and the, when Seven came out, it kind of was, it was tongue in cheek because of the graphic and you did you knew what was going on, but you didn't have that high detail like you do now. Mm. So now they've got Sid like that. It's like oh, they really part part of it's just like there's no name. <laughs> when when they announced the like when they announced it, and they they said her name like and people were like oh is that Sid? And it was like, oh, they're called the Chief Engineer Mechanic, and it's gonna be, she's gonna look like, I, I thought like FF7, kind of like Texan, and then they showed the look of her, and I was like, oh, okay. That yeah. was, uh, <laughs> I that think I was thinking actually, I kind of expected her to like, it was really cool, all like, that thinking she's gonna be a mechanic, she's gonna be your mechanic, like, because yeah. thinking a woman mechanic kind of breaks the stereotypes in itself, I thought this is pretty good, like making her breaking the stereotypes of having the dude always doing the mechanical lifting, that's pretty cool, and they turned her into like some sort of like sexy HM girl over the car kind of fix this <laughs> these guys are stranded come on come on fix my car for me okay I'll do it for you sexy guys I'll you know yeah it's very much like, like I'm <laughs> I'm like after lightning being like main protagonist of 13 like I'm big on female leads and just having that dominant female mechanic yeah it would have broken the kind of the trope of it and it's like and that we're going to go back to our Japanese roots and do this for the male, and this is not a female kind of. <laughs> they're the only, like, I suppose you've got, like, the four main characters, and that's going to, like, bring females in, in a way, but if they've got that, all the females in this game are dressed really provocatively, and. Mm. Yeah, I think could, Stella like... doesn't look too bad. From what we've seen of Stella so far, I'm hoping yeah. she's not going to be, like. I have, I have, I think if they break my expectations of Stella, I'm going to be really. <laughs> That's my one is thing. I absolutely Stella. adored her when I first saw her. Huh? Is it still Stella or is it Luna? Has anyone cleared I this? I think there's a bit of confusion there. I think there's two. I think yeah. Yeah. Luna is one that Noctis knows, and obviously mm. Stella is over the other country. She's the bad guy. Or one of the inversion commas bad guys. I'm yeah. Like, I'm 100% sure what's happening with the story yet. No, it's so, I'm like... Sure in one... Sorry, go on. I was going to say, it is very, like, loose. Like, they haven't really explained... But yeah, they haven't any, explained it. There's no, she, it could turn around, she could be Stella, they might have changed her name, but mm. I really hope it stays as Stella, not Luna, because. Mm. We're growing attached to Stella. Yeah, it's, I've, I've grown attached to her day. name. I don't know, I just, I quite like the names, like, talking about the stars. And, you know, Noctis and, and Stella, that works, you know, it's like the moon and stars, mm. or whatever, or night and stars. Like, the darkness and the light, but having Luna just makes it kind of dark again, so. So maybe that's what they're, if they're two separate characters, maybe that's what they're intending, having like another darkness and then the light. And then having the, you know, I, 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 basically, I have great expectations for all this in Buffy kind of Stella character. Because, mm. um, I don't know, it's because obviously they kind of really highlighted in the very first trailer, it's going to look like it's going to be like, kind of, um, like a Romeo and Juliet kind of Final mm. Fantasy. Yeah. But. What I do not really want to see is the Stella to just kind of disregard her entire family because it looks like there's like you know all these opposing nations and then Stella's family seems to be wanting to take Lucy and Helen's family's crystal and obviously she's grown up with her family and this country needs to leave all her life. I don't want her to just turn around, accept what Noctis is saying, and then just kind of go completely against her father without like. Yeah. Fighting for him and then having some massive realization that they're doing something wrong. I don't want to just turn around and accept just because she loves him. Because I just feel like that's a really weak point for a female yeah. antagonist. Mm. I, find. Yeah. I really don't want her to just turn around, accept it, bam, that's it. 
Well, one of well, the no, first. Like, I want to take the bloody him up a bit and be like, yeah, <laughs> go down. This is this is my crystal now. Your crystal isn't yours. You're not looking after it. My father says this, so I'm going to do what my, is best for my family. Yeah. Because in real life, how often would you turn around and be like, go against your entire country and family for someone you just met? Who's one it? of the first trailers of Versus showed Stella and Knox getting ready for a fight. Yeah, that's what that's what yeah. really excited me. That's like yeah. when I first saw that. Obviously, you knew that they'd like it. Like they had a lot of chemistry there. But then when as soon as I saw they like liked each other, they wanted to go to each other. And there's those lights were holding them back, and they were literally looking like they're gonna bloody each other. I thought this is, this is brilliant. I love it. Oh, this is this is exactly what I wanted to see. Is like this sort of tragedy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see it turn around and just kind of go against everything just to satisfy him. That, that's not what I want to see. That's the thing. It's a relationship that we've not really seen before in Von Mm, that's what I, I think that's what I like it so much as well, because it just, so, it just mm. seems so different from everything else, rather than just having a guy, there's a girl here who's also good. Mm. There you go, go save the world. It's kind of <laughs> two people on completely opposite ends. You don't really know who's bad, who's good. You just know that there's kind of crystals here. You're not really sure what's happening with these nations is like completely wars breaking out across the entire world but these two people are obviously fighting for their families so well, we haven't seen much of that in the demo we haven't seen any story really in the demo so far but no they like, didn't when I, when I, yeah. Yeah. seen the single quest i mean so, well, do you reckon yeah. all quests are going to be of this magnitude do you, do you reckon like simply raise the money to fix your, your car fight behemoth is going to literally take this many hours per quest I hope, I, so. want, I hope so, because I want to be a nice big, for this amount of time it's been in production, I want to be a massive, big, long mm. game. I want to be the, like, Titanic Final Fantasy strategy. <laughs> <clears throat> was a so I really enjoyed the... hmm? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just looking through the, one of the trailers. There was a female dragoon. It went one of the previous Yeah, trailers. I, I saw <laughs> that. Yeah, that was... I remember don't, that. Don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not see it? I, 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 kind of I do it. recall it, and yeah, it's like I think at the time that was like the like uh, concept for Stella, I Ooh. think. But obviously, like a lot of things have changed since then, and like I've heard people like uh, I can't remember where I heard it. Somebody from Square said that stuff that was in the 2013 trailer has changed. Oh. So it's like that was when they re revealed it as 15, and even stuff then well, has changed. It's like, how think much? Think about it, it's been in development since what 2006, isn't it? Yeah. E3 2006, when they launched the first trailer on the back of what Lightning, Lightning, well, the first Final Fantasy 13, wasn't it? 13, yeah. 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 So there's room for a lot of it's, change in there, definitely. I think they've changed so much in that. Hmm. I'm hoping they haven't like, changed the spell and not I mean, I, I think we may see elements of it, but we could treat it as like like what um, Agony's philosophy was, kind of like a very nice tech demo. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we've got plenty to look forward to just by the kind of the looks and ideas and what the trailers we've seen, like the female dragoon and like Katie was saying, their whole kind of like uh, they're kind of facing off against each other, but kind of like oh, I really don't want to be doing this, but I'm gonna have to do this. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, family for country. Yeah. It's, it's going to be very interesting. I think so. But then looking at like from the demo, looking at the four characters you have, I personally really like all of them. Not that I'm like biased or anything, but I, I did quite like all of them. They were kind of different, but they all kind of work. They all, they all have like a chemistry together. People like dissed it or like shunned mm. it, like saying that's gonna be like a stupid boy band, like thing, something so rubbish and pathetic. But yeah, I'm surprised no, how I well it works. Find it. I well, I just thought, like, these four guys, if we just had the entire country ransacked, we're kind of left and are trying to, like, you know, work with it. This is probably what would happen if you're with a prince. You wouldn't exactly just be going and, you know, not in a nice car. Well, yeah, I mean, country. yeah, you have to think about it in context, don't you? You've got the prince, mm -hmm. you've got his advisors, you've got his friends, kind of, and yeah, uh, like, they just, to... like, it's not like a boy band from what I see, like Noctis is like the prince, no. but then these guys are like like especially Promptu and then Gladio Gladio Gladius. There Gladio. he's like there has like mates. But then Ignis is like seems like more like his advisor. Kind of, yeah, I've known you. You're you're they're mates, but he's like trying to lead him to like the throne or whatever's going on, we don't know, but whatever's gone wrong, he's trying to lead him back to 
what is rightfully his, so to speak. Yeah, like Pro Prompto and Gladiolus are like egging him on to do whatever. And yeah, like, nope, they're like helping win. him out. They're like, <laughs> they seem more like his like man friends. Like, yeah, yeah. they're like my pal. But then Ignis is kind of like his pal, but he's the more level-headed one who actually wants him to get stuff done. Yeah, and, and the fact you see that in what three-hour demo, it's going to be mm. uh, interesting to see what happens in the full game. Yeah, with this massive world and you've got all, like everything going on, is are they going to be able to keep that going on there as well? It'd be, it'd be quite interesting to see if that changes. Like, if there's parts of the story that would change how he acts and reacts in the world. And... Yeah, definitely. Mm. Well, I think there's quite a lot of. Um, randomization in the game of course with regards to kind of like where the imperial um, airships drop down troops and stuff and uh, mm. kind of like cars being stopped at um, points mm. on, on the road so I mean if, if they can put those kind of intricacies into it it would be incredible to see how a character reaction goes along could mm. affect the storyline I mean are we thinking multiple endings multiple types of endings or are we thinking like it, it's an epic story that will finish just a it's... single ending, please. I didn't like yeah. the multiple stuff it did. Yeah, if it's a multiple yeah. ending, yeah, I it's not my cup of tea, no. I don't think I feel satisfied. This game was such a grand scale, it had a multiple ending, or like an ending that had such a massive cliffhanger. I think I feel. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like... pure conjecture. I, I, I personally wouldn't want that as well. Just no. Now. It was, I think it was uh, Sakaguchi the other day that. Was it a couple weeks ago when he had the. He had his like lifetime achievement one, and he spoke to Debata and was like, "Make a concise ending. Like people want a concise yeah. like story. Yeah. Don't don't do this kind of beginning, middle, and end in different parts. Like, mm. so yeah, he may may think on that, but yeah, it'll be strange to see like character development if it because it's such a massive world. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm stuff. thinking. Like yeah. having such. Leaving it too open might make people feel like, oh, I'm a bit lost right now, you know, I don't really know. Because, I don't know about you, but that map was huge, in my opinion. I was running around mm, everywhere, oh, half trying to explore it, it was absolutely massive. Yeah, and they said that, that, the, that the, um, the full world is 20 times bigger than this area. So, Blimey. So, so like... I know, I've heard... Sorry, Karen. I was like, that's a big chunk of area to explore like i know you've got the car and you're gonna have chocobos and i don't know about airships they haven't said about flying because i know they said that once you drop into the game there's no loading screen mm. so is there going to be airships are you going to be able to like go between continents like that like it's, they haven't said anything on air travel yet yeah uh, like a fast travel system yeah like even yeah even fast travel but even like they're going in into one city and saying you want to go to uh, back to Insomnia or back to um, even the Duskay region, you just get on an airship and you fly that. Like, would that. That would be quite good to see. Like, transport. Yeah, definitely. Having that. Um, I was hoping we would be able to ride Chocobos. Yeah, when you saw. Because like, there was a few of them just wandering around in the forest. And like, oh, can you just go and tame them? There was but... a point where you head over to the east side of the map in the woods, uh, near yeah. where the, the circular rock formation for Be Behemoth was, where there was a yeah. small mini quest for that. But I was kind of going, oh, okay, there's that there. There's a Chocobo ranch on the other side. Uh, there's got to be Chocobos. <laughs> <laughs> or do I just have to walk around? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th there was a big thing that we are completely missing, and that's the whole mm. campsite and the camping. And the experience points. Um, oh, definitely. What, what does everyone think about that? Like not gaining levels while you're going around. That you've got to keep turning to camps and getting your buffs. What, what Lords does, of the Fallen kind of does the same thing, but with hmm. more risk. So I think it works better this way in a sense that there's no risk to it, so we can bank it. But I feel that yeah. I don't know about you guys that maybe daytime seems really short. So yeah, when I, I was trying that. to find. I found that. I was trying to find Behemoth in the, you know, the, the first go, and I, I was wandering around this giant, you know, circular rock, couldn't find the entrance, and then it was night time. So the first time I found him, it was night, and like we said, it's more difficult. But then trying to find, him, get back yeah, to I found that daytime because I thought it, they were going to implement it like the day was going to, you know, not match like what it is in real life, but like seem more like the time spans between day and night was going to be more realistic. 
but then I found, like you said, like day was there and all of a sudden it was night time and because of that I felt like I needed to camp again. I was like, I just camped like a few minutes ago. I just walked halfway across the map and it's night time already. And was like, oh, I didn't even do anything. I need to really camp. Also, I enjoyed it, but... um. Mm, sorry, carry on. No, I was, I was just going to... something silly that the... Um, <laughs> I enjoy the food bit, but it really is making me hungry every time you make something. <laughs> <laughs> it's hyper-realistic, isn't yeah. it? It's, yeah. It's, it's salivating every time yeah. you camp it and, and you have a look at it. <laughs> Although, one thing I didn't like it was um, the loss of um, mini-quests. I, I didn't ever kind of drop a mini-quest and then go and try and get it again. Didn't know if that was possible. I kind of... But you know what? I'll stumble around in the dark. I'll finish this, then I'll go camp. Did anyone else kind of drop any quests and try and pick them up again? No. Yeah, that was no. me. I did one. You know the one we have to pick up a jewel, jewel in the big lake. I oh yeah. That yeah. First time. I was like, there was a jewel in the lake. Yeah, I found that. Oh. Did anyone encounter that Ixian mob? The, no. the, yeah. the antelope mob with a giant scythe horn that just charged yeah. around and when yeah. you couldn't keep yeah. up with it at all. No. Over I, by I, the marshland. I, yeah, I tried. And I got hit in the face and it kind of failed. It <laughs> kind of ran me over. I was like, oh, that kind of failed. <laughs> Not yeah, like, like, No, like I said, I was, um, I was I kind just of like, I want to finish it, the yeah. mini quest before I want to go camp. So I went over to the marshland, tried to find that jewel and then ran into it. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try this again later. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a mob? I just found one, like, mm. running around. I just found the one, oh, yeah. he was, like, running around, hopping I around. I just found just... one, too, yeah. It and was kind of just me over. I managed to land a hit or two on it, and it didn't do anything to its health. And then I just kind of went, I'll be here all night and all the next day doing this, so <laughs> yeah. I'll come back to it later. I tried, and then he kind of hit me, and I was like, it doesn't feel, that, that doesn't feel very nice. I was like, I'm, I'm going to leave him alone. I'm also not supposed to play him. Well, I probably could, but it probably be really bad. I think with the camping itself, they've, they've actually got a really good opportunity to add more like character interactions and stuff mm, there. Yeah. So I wonder if they're thinking yeah. about letting us actually be at the campsite, move around, talk to the people about how the day went, maybe stuff like that. That's yeah, a good point, really yeah. yeah. For the final game, obviously they didn't have that in the demo, but I think that would just be good, something that that would be great, actually. Like, you know, Mass Effect shit, how it was like your hub and you go and talk to every character after a main mission, and mm. you know, it was mm. just a good way to get, you know, more character development in. So if they added that to the camping, I think it would be really good. Yeah, that would, uh, that would add a whole another layer to it, um, which we're kind of used to that in Final Fantasy anyway, like, if you think like Final Fantasy IX, when all the, the party members go to Limblum for the first time, you've got to like go and find out what they're kind of. Oh, you're, you're finding out about the Zay today yeah. and all, all the like yeah. Tantalus. It's like yeah, adding that into the camping and even into like the different towns mm. would be really cool. Oh, one thing I really liked was how realistic it was when you went to like the Tokyo Ranch. Like you go there and all your characters like dispersed. I really liked yeah. how they all like seemed. They all had like their own characteristic rather than just following you aimlessly. They kind of all wandered around like. I know um, Prompty went over to the Choker Rose quite a few times to me and he kind of went over and Ignis was looking at the Gishel Greens quite a lot near the thing and then Gladio was just kind of like hanging around not doing too much but I like how they kind of wander off and they go and do their own thing and then when you leave like Nox is like yeah come on hurry up guys come on stop doing what you're doing I'm like, okay okay I'm coming I quite like how realistic it is it's because if you go somewhere like that with like your good friend you don't expect them all to just sit on your bum following you around <laughs> exactly what you want no. Did you they guys like, see the couple fighting at the Chocobo Ranch? Yes, that was harsh, man. She like punched his <laughs> face. I was like, oh. So funny. I felt like I was intruding. I was like, I don't think I should be listening to this. Am I, am I kind of glad of it? Oh. Yeah, part of this, it, like, it seems too realistic. Like, it's too ahead of its time. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, it's, like, really insanely detailed. Um, I, I really like it. I think that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, but it, that's the thing. It's, it's so different, but it's... You, you can't, because people are asking me, like, oh, what's it like? What RPGs is it like? Is that more? I'm like, it's, I suppose, like, the closest thing you could say is, like, Skyrim, but it's not even that. It, you're only saying Skyrim because it's open world. Yeah. Like, there, there's nothing that's even close to what this is, um, which is, I think it's really good. It's really good for the series. As yeah, a whole. I think so. It's going to stand out, I think. Yeah. It's really ambitious. It's going to put the series back on the map. It's mm. going to be unique. 
I think, I think it's what Square Enix are really hoping on. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if, if it flops, then it might be a bit of a disaster. <laughs> out of how many years it's been in development now, I think people have gotten massive. People are going to have massive expectations. And the one thing all the critics will pound on is they've had nine years, almost, almost could be 11 years, to make this, and <laughs> they've done this with it, and we're not well, impressed. Well, it's had rave reviews so far, hasn't it? PAX, yes. everyone who had a look at it really, really loved it. Mm. And uh, I mean, I haven't, I've haven't really read much about it over the past day or so. But from what the little I've seen, it's had massive, massive positive reviews. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm just like scouring now, and I'm, it's just like this is why you should play the 15 demo. This is like there's th mm. there's a reason why you shouldn't play it, and that's because you'll want to just keep playing it. Oh, uh, tell me and, about it. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, there's there's a lot. That's but why. <laughs> That's why three-hour demo code is selling for forty, fifty dollars on, on on eBay. I mean, yeah, the people doing it no shouldn't be doing that at all. Go and buy it. Definitely, we'll go and buy Type Zero. But uh, mm. I mean, it's it's built that much hype over it, and whatever people people are saying is only going to further it. I reckon. Yeah, I think also because um, there's little elements like like we were saying about Skyrim and Assassin's Creed and things like that, and I think it will appeal to that wider audience because I mean, for me. Obviously, as we've grown, the graphics are getting better anyway, but it's little attention to details, so like moving slowly through grass and going between crevices in the cave, moving really slowly, a bit like Tomb Raider in, in a sense. And it's little things like that which just make it the realism. And a friend of mine earlier, when Behemoth's chasing me down and my sprint ran out, oh, and yep, all yep. he could hear was me screaming down <laughs> Skype, going, no, I'm going to die. And then I just managed to die through the hole and get out. But um, yeah, I mean that that to me, I, I haven't experienced realism like that in a game in in so long, and it's really really great that they've done that. That yeah. mirrors exactly my experience with B Behemoth, and uh, I was actually kind of scared. I was like, I'm actually gonna die. It's gonna get me. It's running <laughs> right behind me. It's blowing away, and I've got to make it for the hole. And I I, I, I was scared at that point totally. But yeah, it, it does have that. It has that sense of urgency uh, about it. Like when something big is chasing you, mm. you want to get out of there. You don't want to be like gonna stand here and take the hit like it's gonna hurt and i think again that's what i like about the titanic scale of everything in this game is that it's realistic like if you go against a giant behemoth it's not going to be easy you're not just gonna like be tickled when it hits you you're gonna be freaking take half almost three quarters of your health off if not you're gonna get one shot at all but yeah it's, yeah. it's kind of powerful it's hard it feels difficult he's so big and it's not the yeah, case of then... pointing with your spiky <laughs> needle basically it's like it's like a pinprick to him it wasn't easy yeah, but, and then he's dwarfed compared to ramu that, that was absolutely incredible yeah. i i oh. was agape at that <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, I can't wait well, to the just to uh, go away from the demo slightly and just back to the 2013 trailer mm. um the big thing obviously we're talking about the titanic scale but the fight that's going to be against the adamantois that they showed mm. That could be like <laughs> on another level again. Like that, it's going to be like a slower fight. But again, that, that urgency of not wanting to get wanting to get hit could be again really big. Mm. That, that should be quite good. I just adore this game. I think I might need to really watch that again. Yeah, certainly. I mean, going back to the whole Skyrim S kind of uh, stylings about it. Yeah, <laughs> it is open world definitely. But uh, if you look at what the previous Final Fantasies that we've had, we've had. Uh, but go back to kind of the early 8-bit version and 16-bit, and then you go to what the ATB kind of style, turn-based, and now look at it. It's uh, free roaming, free free action, free attacks. It's yeah. lovely. Well, I mean, you could kind of see the similarities here between mm. oh, the, yeah. the, ori the original uh, NES ones with like Final Fantasy 1, where you're like, here's, here's your quest. You're not telling you where to go, but here's your quest, and you can just wander around. Yeah. And this is kind of doing that, like, I know you're getting the markers and you can, like, okay, you can pinpoint where your quest is, but you can just go off and you can wander around, you can level up, and you can do that instantly in the game. And it's like, this is pretty much, this is the new gen Final Fantasy 1, in a, in a sense, uh, with that whole, you've got goblins, you can go fight them in a cave, go and collect your summons, go and collect your items, and then you can come back and do your main quest whenever you like it. It's, yeah, it's got that nice nostalgic feel to it. One thing about it. What does everyone think of the music? Oh, the music's stunning. Yes, yes, the battle music I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed that. The only gripe I've got that it's very similar to Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. <laughs> in in places, yeah. it's very similar, yeah. and it's like 
are people going to like notice the difference or is there something like this the Kingdom Hearts game? The music! Oh, sorry guys, I have to like mute that. <laughs> the music! Oh, jeez, don't. Oh, my goodness. Female boner you know, again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this game is just. Oh, we're we raving so much. As soon as they give a release date, I'm going to be like jumping around and running around the walls. Just... But, nice. you remember, do you guys remember that trailer um, <laughs> where the airships are going over and then that um, really awesome, like. I can't describe the music. Yeah, I yes, don't that one. That one when the yeah, airship's that... going over and that started, I was like, "This is it." I was like, "I'm, I'm done." I was like, when I heard that, and then we get to the end of the game, they start playing that again. I was, well, started like a glimpse of it. I thought, you know what, you know what soundtrack you, <laughs> you know what you're doing. I was like, you're hyping me even more because I love that soundtrack. Who did yeah, the score? Yeah. Was it Mizashi? Shimomura. Was it Yoko Shimomura? Yeah. Um, one thing I'm really wondering: she's doing that concert next month. I'm just wondering if you'll mention anything about this thing. Oh, please. I I suppose now they kind of could. Yeah, like now now the game is essentially out there in a sense. Like they could do battle theme or night theme or the the somnus on the main menu. Like they've got that range dump. They could do that. People will have heard it in a commercial sense. Yeah. Do you know is this the concert in France? Yeah. With the music and the demo, my main problem was that there was actually no overworld theme. There was no music playing when you were just running around. And I thought that, I don't know, I just felt like that wasn't really Final Fantasy like at all. Hmm. You're I right. do yeah, want that could, something that plays. You really pick up the ambient you. sounds. Mm. You could hear cars, you could hear the airships, you could hear like the chittering of monsters, but there yeah. was still no ambient music. You're right, yeah. No, I mean, I'm not sure if that was on purpose or if they, they just didn't have an overworld theme ready for it. Speaking of yeah, that, it might be. I quite like not having one because it made it feel more mellow. I don't know, like you're in the middle of nowhere and, you know, it is the middle of nowhere, nothing's really going on. You, know, hmm. you don't really know where you are. You, you're trying to do something to kind of get to where you're supposed to be. I don't know, I quite like not having one again because it made it more realistic and you kind of focus on yeah. other sounds, like Chris said, like, it doesn't feel like more fun. I know they're kind of risking like going away too much from Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy games, but yeah. like it's not the same in the sense that you start in a city and then you kind of go out into the world, you're in the world all the time. It sounds like in this game, you're kind of out there all the time, just having a constant loop of being. I don't know. I'll tell you what I did enjoy, and I can't recall right now if there was music with it. I think there was. Creeping through the mist, tailing behemoth. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there was music. Mm. Yeah, there was a little bit of music. It's not really quite, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that would be good for the overall. Just having that very, very quiet, like ambience. Mm. Um, and then when you go into battle, it kind of like kicking off quite big. I think that would be really good. You know what? Like, I re there's two. There's two soundtracks I really like so far. I've listened to the fifteen ones. It was that one that I mentioned with the airships. Mm. And when you have to properly fight them, that music, it's, you know, like, <laughs> I can't remember when they first played it, it was when the, uh, I think it uh, was in the trailer when you, like, see Stella and Noctis about to fight each other, like, I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, I think, is it Omnis Slu? Yeah, something like that. Lucrani? I think so it was, like, one. really yeah. urgent and, like, amazing. I was like, this is perfect for a boss battle team, I was like, this is exactly what I want. I was like, yeah, yeah this is good, I can deal with this. Yeah, like, for me, I... I'm big on the nighttime cave battle theme like that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that was the best that's my favourite theme so far I've heard, as well as the trailer theme. Um, like the, those two, like have sold me completely on on the soundtrack. I'm like, okay, like it it's got the similarities to Kingdom Hearts, but you can tell it's something completely fresh. Mm -hmm. I love the new arrangement of Samus and Violin. I'm just like, wow, mm. so pretty. It's just like. Yeah, can I have an album of this now, please? please? Can I have the game now, please? I think that's oh, what. They've teased me. I want more. Yeah, they, this is a big tease. The game. So it's a it. massive tease. It's like, oh, really? I know, it, it's like a cock tease. It's like, oh, come on, you can't do this to me. I've got blue balls now from Final Fantasy XV. <laughs> oh. There is something that is kind of interesting me because I was one of the ones who bought the 13 demo with Avent Jordan when it was in Japan. 
I actually tried out the 13 demo, and I'm looking at the similarity. I actually tried to play the 13 demo today, and play the 15 demo today, and it's like, 13 had nearly everything done when it was released, the demo. This one's like 70% done, and I'm like, I'm asking myself, you know what, this will be out before February next year. Yeah, there's... I'm wondering. Like, I'd like, I'd love it if they just turned around at E3. And but yeah, go, by the way, we're releasing and, it. And they go, yeah, it's going to be done. It's going to be out in uh, spring 2016. And be like, okay. I've, I, I've, I've got a feeling it won't be until 2017, but that's kind of like, if they say it any sooner, then I'm going to be happy. Mm -hmm. oh, that another, like, two the... years. I'm just about finishing the demo now. There is the on the the option to drive starts off. There is actual travel time and an actual level recommendation as well now. What just before you finish the actual demo, there's actually a recommended level you need to be at each level of each area as well. Oh, so, yeah, and I've just got Cassius the disc um, area info recommended recommended stronghold recommended level 15. And there's a travel time as well, so there may be coins involved in you travelling. It's like, okay. I've just oh. finished the demo now. Nice. <laughs> That's Literally, a nice um, if, you do, if you guys do want to see the actual Phantom Sword attack, I can put a link in, but there is actually four of those Phantom Swords you need to get. Um, and when you do do the attack, it's absolutely stunning. <laughs> it's actually right takes right out of the actual first trailer. Yeah. Every, everything goes spinning round him. Mm. All the swords go spinning round him. He can just attack about fifteen enemies at the same time. Well, yes, yeah, I know when you've got like when you've got that first sword, I was like, okay, you've got four swords spinning around you. That's not the demo. But I was wondering, like, oh, is that going to be like you're going to have more swords? But obviously, yeah, you've got them in the demo, so that'll be. I'll put the link in. I'll put the video in, in the description for, you can't watch them because you don't want spoilers, but the actual it tells you where they are located if anyone wants to have a look. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that link there. I'll, I will try and find them by myself and then I will. Because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff you, you guys saying, like that, that horned animal, I was like, I never even saw that. I never even saw any inkling of that, but I kind of like, part of me is like, I did rush it a little bit. Um, and then. I, um, as soon as I finished the demo, I was like, right, now I'm going to do Behemoth without summoning, and that's kind of all I did, um, so mm. I've not actually, like, explored a lot of the map, really, um, Ooh. which, that, that, um, part of that cake, that music that cake, he likes to just put a kid right at the end, I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> so it's good. Like, it does. Like, it does. It like ends. It loves. It literally ends on that music. I'm like, you, you tease me. Stop teasing. Me. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean it. Please don't stop it. Please give me one. Do you, you guys want to try it after the end? I yeah. I watched it. I was, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, don't want to spoil it because uh, not everyone's completed it yet. So I don't want to spoil the ending. Um, but I'm... the character, it's like, who, who, who is she? <laughs> yeah. At first, I was like, is that Shiva? Is I want this like... game, guy. I want it so bad. Oh. I'm, I'm just really starting to think. Release date. What could they could do with limited editions? Yeah, the other ones. I will cry. Yeah, that says a lot. I'm like, is, is there going to be a limited edition for like? Five hundred thousand, and you get a replica car. Like, <laughs> Sweet, let's do it. Are they, are they are they silly enough to do that? But a collector's edition actually, would be really nice. Like, oh. I've been dis I was discussed this with Amy. I was like, if fifteen comes out in Japan first, you want to go over? I was just like, yeah, let's go over. I'm like, <laughs> I'll order. I'll, I'm just trying to think. If, since they've done a special edition PS4 for for Type Zero, I'm just thinking, what will they do for fifteen? I'm so okay. I need, I need, Wayne. Please tell me when this game comes out. I just need it now. <laughs> <laughs> Too much of a tease now. You shouldn't even give yeah. us such a <laughs> Um, talking about like uh, in Type Zero. Do Do you think the demos um kind of overshadowing Type Zero? 
Oh. Yeah. yeah. I think it is a bit, yeah. Since I think not... everyone went and played the demo first. I, I think didn't... firstly because it's... <laughs> <laughs> no, oh sorry, God. I was glued to the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I found most people on I talked to were like, yeah, I played the demo first. Firstly, because they didn't want to get it spoiled for them, because everyone has to be talking about it soon, like a few hours after they had been released over here. Yeah, I, I think that was a big thing, like because a couple of websites spoiled it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think that was the main reason they played it. First, yeah, but I think then they played it. They were like, wow, this is wow. Uh, IGN and Kotaku spoiled like the big one, of big reveal of the trailer that no one else did. It was like, yeah, I really didn't mean to know that. Yeah, it's, I think that's why lots of people wouldn't have played it, because they were like, I don't want to spoil something. I don't know why I did, that's the reason why I did. But then I think I'm biased, because out of all the three, Titan 13 and now 15, and this was always the one that I was really looking forward to. Same. It's always been the one. Yeah. It was announced, I it's like, uh, looking at three of them together, I was like, I want that one. <laughs> that's the same time. I, like, I want that one, that one looks the coolest, that's one looks like the most fun. I like haven't actually story. played Type Zero yet. Um, I started. Type, it's not bad. Type Zero is um, really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I I played it on PSP. Yeah. And it was what thirteen should have been. Like it should have been the console release. Um, yeah. Of thirteen, and it it's its story is really good, and it's got a lot more to it than what it's got a lot more substance than thirteen, and it's a mm. PSP game, and now they brought it out and it, it's pitched it up and. They've taken the online features away from it, which I'm not sure what to think of that yet. Um, but you could, so uh, now you can call in allies during your missions, mm. and they're, they're just random NPCs that you can call in and get. <gasps> I had Tetsuya and Nomura the other day. I was so <laughs> happy. I was like, wow, yeah. this is insane. It's actually members of the Square Enix cast. They've actually yeah. picked yeah. random people, and you're like, what? Yeah, uh, so they, they drop in, but in the PSP version, you would have. Your friends list and you could drop in and out and you could do missions together and i think that would have been quite cool to have as well mm. but yeah it's, uh, type zero is good though we'll we'll talk about that on probably next sunday if we yeah I'll to let, let get let the uh, 15 hype die down <laughs> <laughs> oh, 15. yeah I have, I have started type zero though don't get me wrong of course just i'm the archer in it it's just it's just, it's just <laughs> Just like, oh. give me the soundtrack. Just, so, if, I swear, if I find out in that next, in about two weeks, that Shimmer Moore is like playing a bit of the 15 soundtrack, I'm like, I'm getting it. I just need it. <laughs> I'm just like, why wasn't I? Didn't know go to Paris. Why? I just haven't been able to play um, Type Zero because I didn't want to ruin it, ruin it for Amy. She's got a collective mission. She can't actually play Type Zero for two more weeks. Oh well. Is that? <laughs> Yeah, that that that's got to be a kit. Okay. And then she just ha- she's holding off, so she's got still too much to do. But I'm looking I'm I'm looking forward to playing Type Zero. But the big thing about Fifteen for me is just like I don't know how I, if, I can't give you a, a score. I just feel like it's brilliant. It still needs a little bit of work. There is still things I'm just like the parry parry system for me is it still doesn't work for me for some reason. <laughs> yeah, parrying is yeah. Um... Yeah, if there had to be a, like, I hate putting scores on things, and I yeah. hate doing it. I hate doing it as a reviewer as well. I'm like, when I write and I'm like, I've got to put a score on this. I don't want to. Um, but if I was like life or death, I had to put a score. I'd go with, like seven point five eight out of ten. Yeah. Demo. Like it's got issues, but as a whole, it what it sets out to do, it does like really well. Hmm. And that's I think that's the main thing. Like it gets people excited for fifteen. It's there's not there's not been enough bad things said about it. No. To, I think the like, only major bad way. thing I've heard is the targeting and camera. That's yeah. the main yeah. bad thing yeah. I've heard so far. Yeah. Everything else, stuff, everyone. It's... I know some people are a bit worried that this is going to be too much like Monster Hunter or like Dragon Age, where it's just like too open for everyone and it's just mm. trying to be something it's not supposed to be, but. I feel like it works. I personally just feel like it works right now because it still, yeah. to me, feels like a Final Fantasy. Yeah. There has been there has been one glitch discovered in the game already. Um, oh. someone from that, someone from the FF UK group actually has posted it. Um, one one enemy, one person in the party was actually floating in midair and stayed like that for about five minutes. 
Oh yeah, I um, did see that actually. Yeah, like Prompto is just flying midair. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the heck's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I saw someone glitched out one of the enemies who was like stuck in a pond and he just kind of like flailed about like a dead fish <laughs> or a dying fish. <clears throat> Oh, Guys, I want the game so much. It's unreal. Yeah. yeah so, well, that's all I've taken away from this game is I want it again. <laughs> like the hype train for me, like it died ages ago just because it hadn't had anything. Else, but I'm so bored of waiting now. It's been so long. But they've totally succeeded in getting me back on the hype train now. I just want it. Yeah. You've not failed me, Square Enix. I knew it's going to be <laughs> the one that I want. Oh, Always and oh. Um. I think that's a, a good place to stop for mm -hmm. this evening. Um, just thanks for coming on, guys, and, and having a talk. Um, I know, obviously, some of you may not have wanted to, may not have said what you wanted to completely, but if uh, we can we can like work on it as we're going, the first time. <laughs> okay. So uh, we'll try and get everything a bit more streamlined for for the next ones and stuff, but just, just that, th thank you for sticking with us uh, throughout this, and uh, yeah, so good. Thank dem you for hosting dem it, dem it was demo was you. good, yes, and yeah. all that. So, Thanks Hayden, it was oh. good. Thank, thank you. Hayden. I enjoyed it.